Greetings, nerds. This is Sina Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Polk. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well. Happy Leap Day. Yeah, Hope you're doing I think well. this is the first time that we've ever recorded on the February 29th. It is. I, you know, as as a the geek that I am, I actually did go back and look and see uh, the previous leap year, how, if we did or not. And we just missed it by like two days the last time, the last leap year. Uh, yeah. We were, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool to uh, you know, not only do it on a leap day, and um, and uh, you know it's also Superman's birthday. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course you would know that. Of course I would. Yeah, gotta get get a bona fides out there. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So to start off with some TV movie news or news about TV and movies. Um. Yeah. The iconic cyberpunk novel Necromancer is being developed into a miniseries on Apple TV. I've never heard of this thing, so. Yeah, it, it, it's um, it's an awesome book uh, written by William Gibson, and it's um, yeah. So this was it's, it's, it's been a series. For anybody in the cyber, it's really it is truly iconic. It was kicked off a trilogy of books, uh, the Neuromancer, and then Count. Zero and Mona Lisa Overdrive. Folks who are familiar with it will are really excited to hear this news. Uh, it was something they tried to really do this show back in I guess 2017 uh, with Deadpool's director, but on I think it was Fox, but it never it never went anywhere. But I mean, basically the premise of the story is it's uh, Henry uh, Case is a disgraced computer hacker. He um, is trying to like he was punished for stealing some of the employer data and you know he's in a virtual reality network and he you know, basically he's given a shot of getting back into good graces and everything and so it really is it's a tale of that and uh i read the book years ago loved it and still have my copy actually but um yeah but like i said folks are we're pretty excited to to see that this is Finally being adapted into a 10 episode limited series on Apple TV. Limited series. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And also the book has the distinction of actually winning a Hugo award, a Nebula award and a Philip K. Dick awards. So it's, it's truly like seminal work as far as um, really establishing the cyberpunk genre, as far as in, in, in literature. Right. Right. Um, Cool. Cool. Well, something for me to uh, to know about it that's coming in the future. Yeah. Um. All right. And then, so so you finished Killer Paradox. I did. Okay. I did. <laughs> I, really, I I really enjoyed this series. I told you I did. We could go. I'm, I'm fine doing spoiler talk. If, you know, we can spoiler alert, folks. We're going to go into a Killer Paradox, and if you haven't watched it. Uh, just fast forward to the last airbender, which we'll take talk. Killer about. paradox is something that you want to go into not knowing anything about. Um, the more you know, the more I don't know. I think that you won't see some of the you you won't. The more you know about the story, the more it takes takes away from the overall like what the fuck is going on <laughs> um specifically for the first two episodes which i just looked on imdb those are the highest rated episodes of the show yeah. um narrowly followed by um the last episode but overall it's a pretty um for there being eight episodes it's pretty consistent across the board i will yeah. admit i um i fell off I watched the first four episodes within one week. I took my time with this. And yeah. then I had life stuff happen. So when I got around to the next two episodes, I was like, I don't I don't know. It's been a mm -hmm. while. Let me jump back in. Um, and that's when they introduce the main antagonist. Mm -hmm. And um, he bothered the hell out of me. He just felt too um too too much like a caricature he didn't feel real mm. um, and and so that 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 saga lost me but i do admit 
episode eight, the finale was actually pretty good. So, yeah. so there was there was some re- redemption for it, but yeah, it was much yeah. much more higher on the first few episodes than I was towards the end. Yeah, I I totally get that because I, I was that way too because it it tr- truly is it's like it has multiple genres going on in it. And so, like, those first few episodes, it's, like, going in one direction, and you're right. Whatever, when Lee Tang, like, was on the run, and he went to, I guess, the next town, Busan, or I believe was the name of the city. Busan. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it, it did take a, a, a different twist. And then, and I, I remember you messaging me about, I think I told you I was, like, watching episode four or five or something like that, and you're like, oh, yeah. Uh, when the... When they introduce uh, Rodan, Robin, the um, I guess one of the I guess the, the main I guess if, if that's the antagonist you're talking about, the the Batman fantasy mastermind of like. No, he's not an antagonist though. I guess yeah. That's why I was well, I just wanted to be sure if you were talking about him or Song. So that's why I was. That's why I wanted. I was that talking point. about Song. Okay. Okay. No, yeah, he he's yeah. he's not an antagonist. He's he's the um he's the man in the chair. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah, the man in the chair. I figured I, I was almost going to call him like the puppet master <laughs> because he, he he is, but he isn't. It's yeah. very interesting to me. Like I loved them exploring his dynamic with um not with e Tong. Um, but with uh, the detective, mm-hmm. um, Nam Nam, mm-hmm. and just because overall, I think I found it interesting that the first two episodes, it's all about E Tong, and yeah. you're you're really following him. And a part of me was wondering, just like, what? Why is this our protagonist? I mean, yeah. he. Like we're watching things happen to him <laughs> yeah <laughs> in a weird way, and he's also kind of just not like there he has nothing going for him no. um but but circumstances just lead him down this path um and who ultimately is the hero and the main character of the story is Namgam and who who's just the the detective who's first hunting down Tong but then they they do this thing where they they lead it into what's going on with his father and his whole mm-hmm. his family history and that breakdown it got a bit too coincidental um for that and and I just just song overall they let him talk so freaking much especially in the finale that i was like just can somebody please put me out of my misery and i know <laughs> one of you will kill him just kill him and here here's something to talk about yeah. um and here's my question for you will so yeah. in the finale mm-hmm. we have the big face off i did appreciate the decision that that bin had to die in yeah. that because that made sense like his mm-hmm. arc is complete yeah. um but what are you what what did you think about how it was nam gam and not tong who killed song in the end i thought that was where where, where it was going to go especially when song started really going through the exposition of Nam Gon's father and his cheating mother and all that kind of stuff. I was like, yeah, it's coming. But I think the reason why I saw it coming was because the, the, really the crux of the series to me, especially as it developed, was the overarching question, okay, is it okay, at least for me, the question that what I got out of it was, <laughs> is it okay to murder someone when they have committed a multitude of sins themselves, you know, like because all the people that Robin had like set Tong and Sung after were people who had done just shitty things. 
and and he was just using them as I mean you know because he had all the vengeance the Batman the whole the whole like yeah he was playing thing. superhero he was playing superhero and he and he Vigilante. used mm-hmm. yeah he was playing the vigilante so so when it did go down that way even though I was hoping it would be the two pawns ultimately taking each other out um but the way that they cre- the way they had structured things I was like yeah the detective's going to take he's going to take song out and so, so and 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 by you saying like that's going to happen you're you're okay you think that was the right decision um i was okay with that decision especially how things and how things ended in the in the series yeah i i actually i was i did not have i felt it was earned i did yeah i'm not i don't think it wasn't earned i just it it makes sense but it almost makes too much sense to Mm me because i'm just thinking Especially with the very end of how, like, he tells Tong, you, you'll you never, never kill again, or, like, I'll come and get you. Mm-hmm. And, well, at the very end, that's kind of what is alluded to, like, Tong yeah. kills again. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like, so what was the point? <laughs> well, no, <laughs> like, I think. Yeah. What, what overall was, was the point? character wise i understand like they did finish this circle but they've inadvertently created another one and now in my opinion nangam has like not much to stand on because he was the good one and he he was the let you got to do it by the law justice is served in the courts it's by taking like it's the whole police aspect of it and yet he and he got his own vengeance by by killing someone who yeah like these are despicable people who who are ending up dying but i don't know i just i just question whether they they could have got whether they had been if they had been less concerned with tying up so many loose threads at the mm-hmm. very end could they come up with a more creative or interesting um, fallout yeah. or well, play of events at the very end? Yeah. Well, I think that's part, and I think that's why I was okay with it because, you know, in a in in a weird way, instead of Tong being the instrumentality to take out Sung that Ben was hoping, I guess, I think Ben was trying to, that was what he was angling towards, especially whenever we see them at, the, I think, the showdown at the, um, at that old restaurant or whatever. Nangang, the detective, ends up being the, being the new vigilante in that situation. Um, but then once, once he satisfied his thirst for vengeance there, he didn't need, he didn't, he wasn't going to like, you know, he's like, Tong, go don't kill anyone else but you know and if you do i i know i'm on to you now but go i don't need you know my my not my you know so i think he was i think it was really showing that um at least in this instance it was okay to kill but you know whereas i think the other two were more kind of you know song was like a blood sport bloodthirsty person tongue is just sort of the accidental killer <laughs> Who just happens, you know, and then I, and I really, the, the whole Spidey sense thing, fantasy element that he had, um, you know, was, was very, inter- it seems like he still managed to maintain some control of, of, of that bloodlust, um, unlike Sung, who truly just had that bloodlust. Uh, so it, yeah, so I was, I was okay with how things sort of ended with, with that. It, it, you know, because if, if the detective had killed every, you know, killed, turned and shot Tang, then I would have been like, nah, now see, you went from hero to like anti hero. <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah. but I'm just saying it yeah. doesn't matter if he had killed Tong, and I'm not suggesting he should have killed Tong then after yeah. that yeah. either. Yeah. I just don't know. I just, 
I just don't necessarily agree or think it was the best decision for him to have, to have taken out Song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I completely see your point there. I yeah. mean, it's and like I said, I mean, it was it to me it was the as things were unfolding, it was the predictable thing. But I, I think just the way that the season had built up everything, even after the the, the, the tonal and thematic shifts that it took, sort of there in the middle of the series. Uh, it really it, did take a shift yeah. because it yeah. stopped doing a lot of the cool editing tricks that it did in the first episode in particular. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, this, where are we? Like what? But, but it played with time a little bit and, mm -hmm. and things just seemed to slow down. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's just, it was a weird shift, but I'm, I'm glad I watched it. I'm yeah, glad I too. finished it. Yeah, it was a pleasant. It was a. It was a pleasant. I'm. I'm so glad you talked. You told me about it. Thanks for recommending it. I. I, I really enjoyed it, and I'm sure, if folks listen to our this section of the podcast, they they definitely enjoyed it as well. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No problem. I'm. I'm always trying to find those 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 gems out there. Yeah. Um, unexpected gems, which we we tried something new this week too. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. And we and we told people listeners all about it that we're gonna dive into the last airbender um, avatar. So I'm just going to make this v conversation very clear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, we are moving to Shogun next week. <laughs> next week we're gonna start Shogun. And and I kind of figured that out last night when i sat down to watch avatar last airbender and within the opening credits i see in production like in collaboration with nickelodeon i'm like oh oh shit <laughs> <laughs> you didn't so, I, you didn't know that <laughs> i didn't no no i i didn't know that i i oh. I really will sometimes i'm i'm thinking to myself i'm like i don't know how much will realizes that I do not follow things nearly as much as I did when we started the podcast um, <laughs> now because I just I overthink things and the more I know the more it messes with my expectations yeah. and then yeah. it just it just ruins so much for me um, point taken like even though I didn't know that, I knew that after seeing the credit and then of course my whole judgment was clouded granted um i'm if you're a fan of avatar the last airbender then then good for you <laughs> <laughs> i hope you enjoy this show um for me as someone who knows nothing about the lore but i feel like i got an entire expositional dump mm -hmm. of information about everything that happened and was going to happen within the first half hour of this show mm -hmm. i um i'm like yeah yeah i'm good i'm good i'm good on this um yeah. i, I want to go watch an adult tv show <laughs> yeah 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 i mean too i will uh like as, as i mentioned to you before and you know i have seen those episodes back in the day never was big i can't say i'm like knowledgeable about this series i did know speaking of the nickelodeon thing the um the original uh creators of the show from nickelodeon were originally involved with this project and then walked away for creative differences and for and, and so folks who are steeped in the lore and, and and fans of the original show uh who were expecting a one for one or you know heavily influenced or whatever I've seen a lot of fans out there, other source material who really are down on this show. Uh, not as, maybe not as not as much as Cowboy Bebop. Um, it's and, just boring. But, yeah. I mean, but yeah, it just I mean, didn't I, grab me. Yeah. Yeah. All I yeah. kept thinking about was One Piece. Yes, and I did too. The, the the production, the sets, very similar very similar in my opinion i feel like netflix put money into this just like they did with one piece mm -hmm. so but when i look back and think back on the first episode of one piece there was there was momentum and there mm -hmm. was mystery 
Yeah. And that's what I think the writers forgot about with this. They were too focused on everyone needs to know all about these kingdoms. Everyone needs to know that the Fire Lord is plotting to take out like all of this information, but but they forgot while writing that all of that exposition that you're basically spoon feeding everything to your viewer and there's no mystery. Yeah. And don't they, repeat it three times in the in the pilot. I mean, we yeah. got it. We got it at the beginning. We got it yeah. again, I think, in the Airbender Village. And then we yeah. got it again in the, from the Grandma in the Water Village. So, yeah. I, And there's I, a hundred year gap here. Yeah. You could have done so much with time. Yeah. I mean... To, to it was to start at the, literally the very beginning of the story. No, 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 because it, like it's it's all telegraphed from there. Yeah, because yeah. it start. Yeah, I will say because when it started out, because I you know again, I am haven't seen maybe but a handful of episodes of the original, and but so I do know that they did. You know, did not show the genocide that occurred from the fire kingdom to the air, you know, with with all the things that we got in ex exposition dumped. But the way the series started out, I was like, okay, you know, we got the earth, we got the earthbender doing his thing and everything. I was like, okay, this is good, this is good. But then it just, I don't know. I was as it, as it as it progressed, I was just like, just like I, I got that. Um, the uh, Lord of the Rings show, the um, Rings of Power vibe, where I was just like, beautiful shot. They put a lot of money into this thing. Mm -hmm. Can't can't complain about the effects and the, the setting and all that kind of stuff. Costumes, everything's on point as far as like, but it was just like so so much eye candy that to your point, they forgot just basic storytelling and 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 so it was just. You get, you, you get your one shot. It's just like a podcast or whatever. It's like, you know, you, you tune in for the first few minutes or so, 30 seconds to a minute or so. And if the, if the people engage you, you stick with it. If not, you're out. And, and I was just sort of like, okay, I watched the first episode and I was, you know, it's not a good sign if you're watching the pilot and you're starting to like check your Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I actually had to go and get something from upstairs. So I yeah. just instead of pausing, I literally left it playing. Yeah. But it was it. See, and we talked a little about this last week when we were wrapping up Reacher. Mm -hmm. um, a thing that bothered me, too, was for all of the exposition, they had some awfully long uh, fight sequences. Yeah. Which were just just not the best choreographed. Mm -hmm. And they were large and they were massive, but it was just, I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't care. I'm not a, I'm not attached because I kind of know because all, especially the first one, all I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, well, okay. So logically he's the last airbender. That means, okay, so this plan is going to be successful and this whole entire, they're all going to die. Yeah. So yeah. why do I care? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're supposed to care because on cares, like Aang cares. Yeah, but mm. yeah, <laughs> not really. Well, it's it, to your point too. Like with One Piece, and I, you know, and I know it's kid actors and stuff. So in the hell, I'm not an actor. I mean, I've only took, only did like drama class and a couple semesters in college and that kind of things. So I don't even profess to be that, but um, it. it I, I I don't again I don't know if it's a story a function of script or or the acting but you know Luffy again that magnetism it's just like I just felt like I, I felt rooting for Luffy you know whereas with 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 Aang I just I just didn't feel a connection to the character and I and again I don't know if it was just the performance or if no, it was just the, the, the writing that's or it's the writing. Uh, yeah, I think because I'm just like it just didn't it just the poor kid just didn't have anything really interesting to work with. No, no, he he played his part the way it yeah. was written. Yeah. And, and, and I honestly too. can't I I can't say it was his acting because I haven't watched enough of his work. Yeah, um, I am only watched this one episode, 
And so I I don't blame any of the actors. Uh-huh. I think they were they literally played what they were given. The dialogue just was not interesting. It felt dumbed down and it felt mm-hmm. spoon like it just it was it's a show it's something that was produced by nickelodeon so that says it all <laughs> it just yeah but the nickelodeon folks don't have anything to do with it which i think is probably where where the charm of the original series is lost okay well well that's a fair point i guess i wasn't really tracking um yeah. uh, but yeah. i mean the company still has something to do with it but yeah. no but you're right the original creators or which which is which is why one piece worked because the exactly. creator was involved with it. Yeah. So so you need that um in these type of shows that already have a major fandom, much less you need it because they are probably smart enough to figure out how to get new new members of the fandom, yeah. how to gain interest, how to tell a story slightly in a new way um so that you can attract someone who doesn't know anything about it and i just think overall they took the easy route and told the story very straightforward and the whole time i'm just like well this is boring it's just boring it's 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 there there i can't think of another word to describe it because it's it's muddled down and it's very straightforward and they literally tell it in a very straightforward manner mm-hmm. and there isn't enough time to grow attached to Aang like like you do with Luffy and 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 it's not even that that first episode is all about Luffy I mean he ha- we are introduced yeah. to a lot of characters we're introduced to a lot of characters here too but as we're introduced they some of them die so you're like so then you get attachment issues and then by the time you get to the ice i wolf cove to meet um katara Mm -hmm. katara and her brother soka who who actually i would argue you should have started with them yeah started with them they make a discovery you learn you learn about the past through the present Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen yeah. that a bit before, but at least that can build some mystery and some something. But yeah. I just there was no tension. Um, I mean, the biggest mystery that there was for me was was what was going on with Zuko. <laughs> yeah, Zuko. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and Appa. Oh, was... <laughs> yeah, a little bit of Appa. I don't know, me not yeah. so much, but. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I'm I'm glad we gave it a shot. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm not completely surprised. It's we're we're moving on to Shogun, um, but yeah, but yeah, well, yeah. Like I said, I mean, as as I mentioned to you last <laughs> night, it's like it wasn't that it was that it was bad. I mean, I've seen bad. It was just it just it was just wasn't for me. I I think it was bad. Okay, well, I, <laughs> I think that, here's why I think it was bad. And why I'm fully able to say that without any buts. It's that when you told me that you're hearing from people who do know this story and who follow this lore, they think it's bad. I'm like, okay. So this isn't just me not -hmm. not liking the lore. The way they're telling the story isn't working. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. Yeah. But but you're right. We have seen worse things. So. (laughs) <laughs> um, and, all right, we're moving on from Avatar. Again, we will start Shogun next week and um, to see if we can um, get on board with that ship. As we continue with Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Smith, okay, we got two two episodes, and yeah. I know one in particular might take some time so (laughs) all right because will told me last week that he likes it that i've been doing this i'm gonna start with episode five do you want kids the imdb description for this episode of mr and mrs smith says john and jane spend summer in lake 
Como, driving cars, dodging criminals, and chasing slippery Toby, whose crimes endanger them. Caring for this baby man makes them ponder parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. I feel like... I feel as though the second sentence sums up the episode more so <laughs> than the first. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, it uh, does. So what did you think about this episode? Oh, so I'm glad that we paired this one and episode six together uh, as far as discussing. But I, 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 but I, I like this episode again. And I, 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 I probably sound like a broken record here, but uh, the this series, and like you said, the second sentence really does um, paint what this episode was about, and it was, it was them to ponder parenthood, and and the that in the in the exploration of that those questions in relationships whenever. You know, of course, they're married now, and 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 do, you know the title episodes. Do we do you want kids and 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 Toby was the metaphor of the baby, and like yep. what, and, and what that you know would entail if they brought a a child into this world doing the work that they do. So I thought again, this shows how brilliant this show is as far as some of the writing, as far as just some of the, you know, the structural things they they do to explore the you know John and Jane and explore relationships with in this world that they have built in, in this show. So I I, I, I I like this episode. I like this episode. It wasn't, yeah, I think it was a good change of pace for me uh, from, because I think, I know, I know you I think maybe the third or fourth, after the blind date um, episode, this was, a, this was a good change of pace for me. Um, shout out to Ron Perl- Perl- Oh, yes. Yeah. I, forgot how much I like watching him mm-hmm. and um I, I I didn't I didn't know when I first realized or saw like oh Ron Perlman's gonna guest star in this episode I was like that's an interesting choice I'm like no this is perfect yep. <laughs> I'll watch it. I the <laughs> John's disdain for Toby was hilarious yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> The fact, and then, and what sealed the deal was he pushed him, and it yes. was a small ledge, and then he peed himself, and it just, yeah. I don't know, uh, like, like, this episode was really good because of the chemistry between those three characters, yeah. and, yeah. and, and going into it, yeah, it's pretty obvious that they're going to talk talk about kids. So instead of contemplating that, all I kept thinking about was I was trying to figure out the concept of time. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, how long have they been married? <laughs> it's been several, yeah. Uh, several what? what? It's been several what? Uh, months. It's probably it's, different. So, or so maybe longer. It's been a maybe. year? Has it been a half it, year? I think it's closer to a year than a half a year. Okay. It just seems, yeah, because it just seems like, because the way they were talking about other missions and stuff, it just seemed like, it was. It seemed quite, it seemed quite removed from the blind date. I mean, not the blind date, the double date. Yeah, I don't, see, I'm not sure what that means, because I'm also not sure how how much time has gone on between the other episodes and 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 why this is important to me is just because when you figure out how much time has like how much time they've been together that's literally how long they've been married mm-hmm. <laughs> how yeah. long they've known each other is how long they've been married for and and so so I'm trying I I want to understand time more in terms of the story, just so I can better understand whose side of this argument I am on. Because <laughs> initially, my in, for my first instinct is always to go Team Jane, obviously, mm. Team yeah. Vagina. Um, but but at the same time, John John does make some fair points. I I just I also think he's a little bit naive because it's like, dude. 
do you, do you realize what you're doing for a living? Do, do you realize? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> See, and this is initially why I took Jane's side is because I'm like, like, wh- what, what are you talking about here? Yeah, you're yeah. literally like you have a gun in your pocket. Wh- why? How? What? <laughs> yeah. What world? <laughs> Yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, but but it gets to the heart too of the question, of like you know, where couples do have a split, and like I totally understand the metaphor. I no no like, no no no. Let me let me. Yeah, well, no, it's not the not the the metaphor for sure, but the as far as picking sides and stuff, it's just uh, yeah. Um, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um. Well, now I've forgotten what I was going to say. I just, I just question, <laughs> I, I, I need to know how much time it's going to Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, I agree with the time. I mean, because I think it, yeah, I mean, this auto is, well, I think for the time for me, I agree with you that it helps sort of contextualize the, 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 the things going on in the episode as far as the dynamics and for, at least for me, um, and, 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 and where they are as far as like are you does this really make sense or, or not with, with well, what John is asking for and, asking and for. you know it kind of reminds me of the the double date and just the when the other John and Jane found out the original plan to make mm-hmm. as much money as we can and then split mm-hmm. it's like you guys still not only are you kind of naive about your marital arrangement here? Your work slash marital arrangement? Well, we're going to get into therapy. Don't worry. Um, next episode. But but you're also naive about your employer. And yeah. just what, what you literally signed up for. <laughs> yeah. To think like it's as easy as we can we can cut the cord as as much as we want like that's that's gonna blow up in their face um man i i now i just want to go back to the double eight and i wish john had brought up kids i wish he had too (laughs) yeah i wish i had too. the other thing about time too is just also the progression in the in their professional relationship because they still have their moments where uh and i know like you said we'll get to therapy here in a minute but um, they still have those moments where they're still trying to fill each other out, but they do seem that at least at their base level, you know, the, some of the things that they, in the earlier episodes where they were, but, you know, tripping over each other, that's, that has, it has subsided some, I mean, there's still some elements of it because, you know, we, we, we get that, especially, you know, high, high, high definitely sees Jane as the alpha in the, in the team. Um, you know, we get the text messages where, you know, they're contemplating, you know, asking her, do you want another John? And it, which, you know, again, goes back to, to the, I couldn't help but think about the double date episode whenever the, they're over dinner, they were asking, you know, I think the, the, the Jane, Jane and John two, uh, let's see, he was, a, they, he, he, they did switch partners, right? He was it the wife. Jane too, did she get a new John or was it John got no, a new no, Jane? It was the opposite. It was, it was the opposite, opposite. Yeah. But yeah. but they didn't they didn't explain that. Right. Like, but, like it wasn't so much I don't know. I don't know if it was a replacement and I don't know what that means. Like, do you right. literally have to kill the other one? Which which is a fair point to bring up because at the end of this episode, Hi Hi asks Jane, does does she want to replace John? Now mm-hmm. Now, I totally understand that conversation. You say no. Why the heck would you tell John? Well, I think it's it's, it's that, I guess, the building of the trust. And, and, and but, but she had to know that like, that would make him upset. And he would he would start to resent her. Logically speaking. Yeah. I mean, with, yeah. Or she just didn't. She, Maybe this is where she still has that blind spot as far as just reading or re- reading the room and reading 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 the his emotions and and, and him feeling validated. I mean, I think that 
really plays into that second mission in, in therapy where you know wherever you know they, they have she pushes the gal off the the, the building and and all that, that. was the good. second one yeah was it was um that one yes that was the yeah. second therapy john didn't john has asthma yeah and yeah he has asthma stairs. right Right. Oh. So, I mean, yeah. So all these little things as I, you know, as I watch these two episodes together, all the little things from those first four, really uh, all those little small moments really like start to really contextualize. Cause like, you know, whenever they were talking to her about replacing John, how I was, um, it, it, I was like thinking back to the date, like what, you know, what does replacing mean? Does it just mean yeah, that? I- he does he go get place place with another Jane or is right. it do they murder him? I mean, you know, does he go down to low low stakes, <laughs> you know, since they put that out there? I mean, what what that is. And then also well, this manipulation. But I guess Jane also to your question about why does she tell him? Hi hi always sends the bottle of wine. Congratulating her on the mission. Never to you know, John never gets anything. It's always so I guess he knows because they're always getting that bottle of wine from, or some gift from, from high, high. He, so he knows what? That, oh, that. that you want to replace him? Not replace him, but, <laughs> but no, but I mean, he knows that as far as the, as far as the agency, the agency sees her as a higher value employee than him. Yeah. Yeah. That it just came out of left field for me because up until that moment, I had never seen anything that would lead me to believe that they did. Mm-hmm. And then they started that thread, which they continued into yeah. episode six couples therapy, um, parentheses, naked and afraid. Which the IMDb description is, oh, John, oh, Jane, our pair have been oh so bad at sharing and caring. Time to call and help John and Jane get ready for couples therapy. therapy. What a gas. AK also Sarah Paulson cameos in this episode as their therapist. My question is, was she hired by the company? No, I don't think she was. No. Was she a target? No, I don't think she was. They okay, truly... Why? Of the house at the end, because they she was recording the sessions, and they didn't they didn't want anything that could be used to comp to compromise them. Um, if 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 some if by some chance some bad actor like you know came across it or whatever, um, or or even quite frankly the agency, uh, yeah. finding those tapes. Yeah, the agency makes more sense. I'm sure the agency knew that they were going to do this, though. I mean, their whole house is probably bugged. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> it probably <laughs> is. But and maybe that's why they destroyed it, because they're like, hey, we, you know, who knows? But um, I, I think they, uh, and, you know, obviously, you know, I could be completely wrong when I watched episode seven and eight, but I, I think this was, they truly, after the events of of the episode five and you know all the seeds were were um planted and and and, and some of the uh, strain in the relationship was i think it came fully to a head after after that mission and it, and you know what the with the house and john buying a house the whole parent you know kids discussion and and, and everything and the, and then of course hi hi Sending a bottle of wine and congratulating Jane. All, all, I think it just, yeah, it, things reached a point. But I have to say, I really enjoyed how they framed this episode throughout as far as each session. Because, uh, mm-hmm. you know, when they first go in there, they're both sitting there on the couch together. They're very open. You know, second epi- second session, you know, Jane, they're sit- still sitting on the couch together. And then, but Jane has a pillow, so they don't not hold hands anymore. And then, of course, the third one, they're on opposite sides. I just really liked just the way this episode was just framed throughout and color to color hues and everything too. It was just really, I know we always, our, our gold standard, I guess, as far as therapy episodes is the doom patrol episode, therapy patrol. So I was like, this one gives a therapy patrol a run for me. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah. This is a really good episode. <laughs> um, what was your favorite therapy session? Because there's three of them in there. 
Yeah. Um, I think, wow, that's, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think, I don't know, uh, but because the first session seemed to be where I was kind of like team John. And then the second one, you know, I was like, mm, yeah, John, you know, as, as things progressed, I was getting more and more team Jane. Um, but to answer your question, I, I think the, um, I think, the, I think, uh, I think it was the second one. Why the second one? Um, that's sort of the, I guess the pivot point for where if, if they had, you know, I think in the second session, that was the one where they, uh, where she suggests them to have their time out when things get too heated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so if I think if both couple, if both John and Jane were really like introspective and really like use those sessions to like do some introspection, they could have like maybe overcome some of their challenges that it wouldn't have gotten to that third, third, um, third place where things were, where things went completely off the rails. Right. Uh, in their relationship so I, I think it was that second one because it was like that you know it, it really was the one for me that like sort of set up that really made that the, the when they were on that third mission what made that mission what made that whole argument um really really hit home um as far as just hitting the right emotional beats and stuff because if they had done what they if they had done what the therapist had asked, I don't think they would have gotten to that place. While they were playing naked and afraid out yep. of the woods. Yep. Mm-hmm. That was, yeah. So what about you? Um. So so uh, session wise, I'll just say the first one to be different. Mm-hmm. Um, therapy wise, the um, naked and afraid was the best post therapy session session mm-hmm. um because i think that is the most honest conversation those two have had in yep. the entire season yep so it was a fight but things that th- there were things that needed to be said um i found it very interesting how jane i because i didn't recognize this um i i I know the seed was there, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, all of these seeds, they're, they're, I, I get it. <laughs> to the <laughs> point where I'm like, okay, that's great, guys. I, I totally, I know how to watch this show. Thank you. You need to stop planting. You're doing a bit over planting, but whatever. Um, <laughs> the whole profit thing. Yeah. Um, like, the fact that she thought. Mm-hmm. That that was why they were paired together. Mm-hmm. I, that was that was just like okay, interesting because for someone who's basically an ice queen, um, you still latched on to the sentimental thing and was like, "There's a reason." Um, but maybe it makes sense because she's very logical. So she's like, no, there's a reason why the company thought this would work. And, and, oh, he likes what my favorite book. So that must be why, like why they think we shall work. Um, granted, like if she was really smart, she would have realized like her neighbor likes that book too. So granted, there's more than just one other person on the world who likes the profits. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No. Um, and then to get, I the the whole John and his mother dynamic with Jane. Mm-hmm. Um, I really appreciated the left turn because I I like how this conversation makes it clear that there has been off. They have had conversations and got into know each other that we haven't seen. Like yeah. the the relationship is more lived in. Um and which I think I felt more throughout both of these episodes than I did leading up to them. Yeah. 
So, yeah. so when, when she, when he finally has had enough with all of the mom comments and she crosses the line, um, with him and he just goes in and, Ooh, it's brutal. It's brutal it because is. yes, yes. Jane should not have said what she said about his mom, but to, to call her out for or how she has treated her, her father since mm -hmm. her mom died. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Because, because there's still this thing about Jane where there's her childhood is so much of a mystery yeah of just because the the quote unquote stories that we have heard and john has heard it's kind of like you still don't really know what like what's real what is jokingly hinting at the truth like you know that there's something dark there but yeah. you're not sure what it is because there's there's clearly been trauma. So so I thought I thought all of that was good. Um, I I like the therapy sessions just because I, I I'm also wondering while watching this episode how much of the we have to talk about our working dynamic, mm -hmm. but not too specifically. So we're programmers. How much of that stuff was ad libbed? <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, that must have been so much fun for like Donald Glover to do just yeah. as an ad lib. Like we're gonna have a fake therapy session. We can't talk like we can't really say what happened at work. So we're right. gonna have to say it in code. Yeah. Um so I I wanna say probably a lot of the therapy, like the th that stuff um was was ad-libbed um, yeah. yeah yeah i agree with you it definitely seems ad-libbed and um yeah it, it, that was the other you know to your as you're talking about the the blow up at the fire um it was for me it was like yeah it, it's you're right they, it is really where this episode really shows how lived in the relationship is because they both you know, whenever you have these kind of brutal fights with your significant other or, or family member or whoever, uh, you know, the you know, the pain points and know where, to, you know, what buttons to push. And and and, and you're right. I mean, that it, it clearly shows that. They've See, had other other know. things outside. I mean, uh, you know, there's been things off screen that that they that they've they've had the, this. These these arguments um about right. you know john you know talking to his mother and and jane being very cold you know uh, i guess opaque about her family relationship and well it's just that it's yeah. not that he talks to his mother it's that his mom is still the emergency his emergency contact. oh yeah oh yeah i was about to get yeah that was that was the but, most yeah that to me was the the part where i was just it that's the part where I was was like, damn, she loves this man. She has fallen even in her own way. She has, she's fallen in love with John. She really does care about him. She doesn't. She doesn't do relationships, right? In a way, and and I think she has a lot of mistrust. But mm -hmm. because the company paired her with John, see, see, I still I don't know if it's love. See, there's yeah. something about it, and it's so hard because it's it's all like they were they didn't fall in love; they were literally paired together. And sure, sure, they could generate feelings and everything. I don't know if they're at love yet. See, I think but, I think they are. But but um, you anyway, don't, you know that, that, that you don't you don't have that you don't have that kind of passionate art fight like they did. If you don't care about that person, like before, beyond the perfunctory professional pairing thing, that that was like that that argument there when they they over the lie, because it gets to it gets to the basic thing of disrespect, and John doesn't feel respected by Jane. That's why the whole thing about her making him feel stupid and stuff, he doesn't feel that she respects him, and in turn, she doesn't feel that he respects her because you know whenever she, you know because. He's like doing this condescending, like this is, you know, 
man build fire how you know build tent that kind of stuff so that that's that's like true and that's what that's why that scene that's why for me that's why the second scene was like set up that third the 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 the, the third not the third th- therapy session but the you know the because that happened i guess that incident happened i guess before the third therapy session so um well, time was but yeah yeah i think so because yeah because i mean that makes sense why they were like on the opposite sides of the couch because they had the book they had the big blow up at that point right, so, right. yeah so yeah it's kind of hard timeline because they're in therapy talking about the events of the past week yeah and so it's the event the fire naked and afraid is the event of the third therapy session yeah right right yeah yeah because yeah yeah, because i guess yeah because yeah because the yeah because the second therapy session we got because i guess the the preceding week it was when it was the card game and you know she the second therapy this um, session oh, yeah. was about uh, Jane that's, pushing that guy off the oh, yeah. roof. That's right. That's right. That's right. While while John tried to run up the stairs. <laughs> right. But, yeah. So the first session was the, the and that, the first was the, the card game. The card game. Yeah. Because after because the, the second session, I guess they had stopped. I think yeah they were not weren't having sex anymore because I guess she was like and you know again felt disrespected because of the way that he was like talking with talking with his boys <laughs> so um which you know again i think gets to the you know why i think the second one was 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 oh, yeah. the pivot point hmm? Hmm. yeah i mean you know yeah i mean it's just why like, exactly she stopped having sex with him but yeah well, yeah well i mean again it's just jane yeah, doesn't I mean, want kids <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, well, the kids probably also had something to do with it too. But yeah. I think, but you know, but I mean, th- th- there's that lack. I guess the, the 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 wall of intimacy or whatever was like starting to break down at that point. Right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's why, like I said, this this episode just like it, it really like ranks up there with me with Therapy Patrol because there's just so many like levels. I I, I even missed it. I, I did watch some pieces of it over like I, whenever we were talking about it the other night. I did go back and like I was like I gotta watch just some of this again because I, I haven't had it. I haven't had a hasn't been an episode of TV recently where I've been like I gotta go watch that one again. <laughs> But this was that this episode definitely was one for me, like where I had to go do that because it just explores so many different levels that I that we could probably just spend we could spend one episode on. <laughs> I have rewatched episodes of One Day. Um. Anyways, yeah. Yeah. so yep, looking forward to next week where we wrap up this season with episodes seven and eight of mr and mrs smith and on that note will why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you yes you can find me on x formerly known as twitter at will and polk w-i-l-l-m-p-o-l-k and you can find me there too at sj belmont s-j-b-l-m-o-n-t please follow our crew on twitter at scene and nerd friend us on facebook follows on instagram and threads at scene underscore n underscore nerd and visit our website www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com but most importantly rate follow and comment on apple Podcasts, spotify youtube or wherever you get your podcasts good night geek out you're welcome 